probably the best mode we can use right now. And I don't have any other like. This is. I'm applying quite a lot of brake yeah. actually. I mean, I'm applying quite a lot of accelerators. Go. Can you see that sharp rock? Is there any way you can see it? Hold on. Just to stop here. This window's slow. You're gonna have to go more driver. More driver? Yeah. Give it a shot. Like, like now? Yeah, nice and slow. Keep going, just milk it. Oh! Dude, I'm very excited about this off-road comparison because we have never off-roaded the new Ford Maverick all-wheel drive here in Colorado, and we have a Santa Cruz to compare it against. Yeah, but inquiring minds want to know, why is there a GMC Canyon AT4 here as well? Oh yes, that's with us too. Yeah! <laughs> well, here's what I want to do. The AT4 is a mid-size truck, which is proper. It's got a traditional, right? Mm -hmm. uh, frame, low range transfer case, off-road tires. How about we use it as a kind of a benchmark and then compare the two compacts to it? I can't wait, and neither can you. Tombstone Hill has really two parts. First, the truth part, which is the easier section, still a very steep climb, and then the dare, which is, has many, many rocks and articulating sections. Here's what I wanna do. I wanna take the Canyon 84 first on the easy part, followed by the Santa Cruz and the Maverick, and then swap over to the hard part in the GMC, the Hyundai, and the Ford, and see how they compare. In the canyon, here's my four-wheel drive control system. First of all, it can be in too high. Four-wheel drive auto, which is cool for slippery conditions. Four high and four low. So all that capability is right here. The canyon does not have a selectable rear locker, but it does have hill descent control. And it does not have very fancy cameras either. I only have the reverse cam. Say the word dude. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because you do often. And oh, okay, I love, I, I love that word. It's, it's, yeah. Dude! <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to say, this is not only the benchmark, this GMC Canyon, mm -hmm. as I go over this really heavily rided out area. It's also the swan song in a way for the GMC Canyon Chevy Colorado because the next generation is like coming in a year. Right, and that we're expecting a very different vehicle, possibly with different powertrains, but this one. This is as close as we're going to get to a ZR2 version of the, of the GMC Canyon, as far as we know. I don't think they're gonna go exactly. any more extreme than that. And it's interesting because it kind of cuts the difference between them, right? Totally, I mean, it does not have the fancy shocks of the ZR2. Nor does it have the front and rear lockers. Right, but, but everything else is really kind of stout and built. Mm -hmm. And did you notice a, almost any slip? No, this no. has been doing fine. This section here has a lot of loose dirt on top of hard rock, which is actually pretty challenging. Uh, especially for all-wheel drive systems. This one's not challenged at all. These tires have super grip. Uh, now, just a note, uh, Andre is driving all three cars. I've driven all three of these. I should say two cars and a truck. You said two cars? <laughs> I said two cars and a truck. Uh, anyway, so the point is, is that um, they're all really good in their field. This one, for a fairly off-road ready type vehicle, has an outstanding ride. This may appear like any GMC K84, but it's not because it also is equipped with the off-road performance edition. And this is the first time we have this particular truck on a trail in Colorado as well. It's equipped with these tires, which are actually the same as a regular AT4. It's a Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack tire mounted on this beautiful and blacked out 17 inch wheel it's very aggressive but here are the other parts that make this performance addition dude andre tommy would be thrilled because there are red tow hooks yay it's off-road worthy what else makes this a special addition well it has a leveling kit okay. so it has a slight lift which actually makes uh, for a really good approach angle because they also delete it from the factory the air chin spoiler. I'm thrilled about that. And so it has armor underneath. We already know about that, right? Yes, extra skid plates are part of this package. Right. Um, they're beefy according to GMC. 30 degrees of approach, uh, special suspension, G80, which is basically a mechanical rear locker, uh -huh. four low, proper tires. This is a really good benchmark. 
I think it's an excellent benchmark, especially because if you think about people looking at these small pickups versus the mid-size pickup, and you're thinking about doing some light off-roading. It, it is also, like all three of these, mm -hmm. I'm gonna call them pickups. Okay. Uh, like all three of these pickups, this is also kind of fully optioned, fully, you know, uh, highest dollar. This one costs about almost 47 grand. Which is an awful lot of money for a mid-sized truck. But remember, all of these vehicles, all of these pickups, do come with less expensive options. And that starts all the way down at a 20 for the Ford Maverick, although that Maverick is a hybrid. We're not talking about that right now. Yeah. Are you using Hill Descent? Yeah, I just turned it on. Did you hear the... Uh, the yeah, that's what I was brakes, wondering. The brakes come on. So this does have that, although this Canyon does not have the surround cam. Ooh. That's the Hill Descent control. Yes. Yeah, it's, so what you're hearing, it's, ABS. It's, <laughs> tra it's traditional. It's like, like the Tacomas used to do or still do. Mm -hmm. Are you able to control the speed of the hill descent using uh, cruise control? Yes, I can decrease, increase the speed and decrease it. And by the way, dude, this canyon also has very similar ground clearance. It's just under nine inches or so uh, to the other two. Yeah, except its approach and departure angles are very different than those and it has a proper frame and it has metal underneath it as actual skid plates, real ones. So that was the easy part of Tombstone Hill right. in the canyon. Let's see the Santa Cruz. As far as other off-road tech, the Santa Cruz has this, which is pretty cool actually. Santa differential lock, which basically allocates about 50% of power to the front and 50 to the rear. It also has drive modes. And we have for this conditions, either smart or snow modes. Also. The Santa Cruz has a hill descent mode, which will be handy today on Tombstone Hill. This version of the Santa Cruz is also equipped with 360 degree cameras, and you can actually see Nathan walking by me. And yeah, so there's front cameras. It shows you how you're steering in reverse. Also shows you plenty of views, which is good for um, off pavement situations. So oval drive, this is the A track from Hyundai, right? Right. And also center locking differential is enabled. Right, that divides torque 50-50 front and rear at low speed. Probably the best mode we can use right now. And I don't have any other like, this is, I'm applying quite a lot of brake yeah, actually. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm applying quite a lot of accelerator. Go. Okay, well, you need more momentum Hang and on. you need to be slightly to the right. Okay, let me disable traction control system. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, we're already I already smoking. smell tire. That's not just tire. What do you think that is? That's trans Double clutches? Yeah, it's the clutch fluid, <laughs> which, which will roast pretty quickly. So this is the eight speed dual clutch transmission, right? Yeah. Correct? Not our favorite off-roading. Should I take a slightly easier path? I would probably recommend it. Also, okay. you need momentum with this car. So, I also need to not hit the GMC. Right. Because that would be bad. Are you gonna try to put it in the first gear using the uh, thing? Uh, no. But I will go this way. There it goes, there's the rear end. Kick 10. Yeah. So these tires are, I mean, a lot of it is about tires too. Yeah, indeed it is. And. These tires are not what I would call grippy on this surface at all. No. In fact, they're they're all season tires. They're not at all what I would consider good for this type of terrain. Not even in the slightest. Okay, and, first gear. I'm trying it. I'm trying everything. Right. And you also have um, cool thing is paddle shifters on the steering wheel. Ooh, like a like a race car. Yeah, like a race car. So. It was moderately successful going up that we definitely had a lot of tire slippage issues, but the rear end did kick in. Yeah. So those are all mostly positives. Um, we did not have any clearance issues. That's really good. And we do have hill descent control in this vehicle. Yeah, which we will try right now. This Santa Cruz is a fully optioned limited model. It's basically top of the line. It does have a turbocharged engine, the two and a half liter, and the all wheel drive system, which is pretty clever. But it also has these 20 inch wheels with Michelin Primacy uh, tires. Not truly meant for off-roading. Of course, Hyundai never said this is a true off-roader. It's more of a sport activity vehicle, according to them. 
but it does have 8.6 inches of ground clearance, the same clearance as in the Maverick. So what I did, I initially decided to choose the line I did in the GMC, right? Right. That and did it, not go so well. No, it doesn't have the articulation, nor does it have the tire to go over those rocks. So now the hill descent control system is engaged. Okay, so you are completely off the brake? Uh, no, let me control it. Let me decrease the speed because I'm not comfortable with this uh, as fast as it goes. It's interesting, the kind of releases and... The, are you hitting the brake pedal? Yeah, I am. Oh, well, uh, that, it's, that going, it's going way too fast. Okay, so in other words, you don't want to use it. Right. Okay, I totally get that. I hate hill descent control, to be honest with you. Yeah, I would rather control it myself, actually. But it's really good for going down like a snow drift and that you're worried about. It's especially good for that. Off-roading, especially in this vehicle, I don't think so much. And I noticed that when it does trigger and when you hit the brake, we've been losing traction. Once again, those tires. Yeah, so if you are serious about going off the beaten path in the Santa Cruz, uh, I would recommend going with a base model with an 8-speed auto. Absolutely. So you don't have the clutches uh, overheating, potentially. Mm -hmm. Which, there's some good news about that. Yes. Folks, we will be getting one of those in the, sometime in the future where we will test the hell out of it. Because, aside from it being the entry-level model, we feel that that's a better setup for doing this type of harder terrain. Now, we get to go... Into the Maverick, dude. <laughs> Maverick. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen, actually. Oh, it's got a narrower tire, but it's a similar tread pattern. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right, this is how you go into gear, and it's the same on the hybrid. I'm not a big fan of it, but you do get this button here, which is low. Now, let's say you're in gear. There's no other way to switch between first and second gear and go back and forth, but if you hit low, it will kind of hold you going off-road. And this is what I'm going to be recommending to Andre when we go up and down the hills. There's no hill descent control on this vehicle, but you do have driver modes here. And the driver modes go from normal, to tow haul, to slippery, to eco, sport, and once again back to normal. Now, we're gonna put it in slippery mode. That seems to be the best one to take torque when necessary and send it to the rear wheels in order to get us over obstacles. All right, you want cameras? Well, you got this. Now this is the backup camera, and as you see, Andre's doing his little uh, dance. I like to call it the Russian bear dance. And this is pretty much all you get with one exception. Boop. That helps you lining up for towing. And I've already used this function on the hybrid and it worked quite well because it helps you line up your hitch. Now you might be wondering what this is. This is the traction control button and it works real quickly. You just hit it and immediately it turns the traction control off. And the thing about it is when we're on the trail, we are going to be using this to perhaps get a little bit more traction if we're losing it. But you know how sometimes you hold these things down for five or 10 seconds and it does something else? Nope, it's just traction control on or off. Okay, so my modes in here are what? Slippery, correct? Slippery, I think, is the best mode that you can choose for this. It will send good power to the rear, and then on top of that, going into low. Yeah, a little bit lower gearing. It is a traditional eight speed. Traditional, but we can't select it at specific speeds. And then maybe, I mean, let's try it like this, and maybe I should disable the traction control system later. Later, if, if we, we have. Are, if we are in trouble, right? Right. Right. So, very similar to the way the Ford Escapes works and also the regular Ford um, Bronco Sport, before you get to the high level yes. one, this one sends torque to the back when requested. Yes. Up to 50%. It went over that. It went over that without much of a problem. This is narrower tires, bear in mind. I mean, sometimes that's good because narrow tire can dig further down, sometimes finding maybe rock. Potentially. Bedrock? Yeah. Or maybe not. Well, we uh, we lost all our momentum, so now we're regaining it. And I was maintaining a, a kind of constant pedal. Mm -hmm. So the traction control found a way. It figured it out, so it stopped the wheels that were spinning and figured it out, just like it just did now and it's pushing power to the back, and we can feel the back kicking in. And it seems to be a little bit quicker reacting than the, than in the Santa, Santa Cruz. Cruz. Until now. Right. Well, stay on it. Come on, come on. There, it, it figured it out again. Figured it out. Huh. I'm really impressed. 
Both vehicles did well, but this did better. And once again, narrower tires, um, which yes, your contact patch is limited and they're both absolutely made for the street. They're not <laughs> off-road tires, not in the least. All right, so first of all, let's talk about approach angles because the Maverick has a 21.6 degree approach angle, whereas in the Santa Cruz has a 17.5 degree approach angle. So definitely goes to the Maverick for that. However, in terms of tire and wheel package, it's very different because they actually have the same type of tires. This is a Michelin Primacy as well, not built for off-roading, but it's on a smaller wheel. These are 18 inch wheels and they're narrower as well. And this is about 20 ish degrees hill, maybe 25 ish in places. Yeah, and you can hear the ABS kicking in doing yep. its job. Yep. And bear in mind, once again, this is loose sand and loose rock on top of hard rock and hard sand. Now, does it matter that it's snowing? No, the only thing that's <laughs> happening is that uh, it's really cold, so it's about 32 degrees, yes. which has been even throughout all of them. It's been around the same temperature, although all three of these do have heated seats, which is rather nice. <laughs> and they're, once again, they're all fully option. This is yeah. a lariat with every option. This is pretty much the very top of the line yes. of this truck. Sorry, pickup. And <laughs> the same goes for the GMC and the same goes for the Hyundai. Yes. So in um, that way, they're fairly even. This thing has behave, behaved much better in the rough. Um, the Hyundai has a, slipped a little bit more, even yeah. though it had the hill descent, you didn't like using the hill descent. And it, Exactly, and also in the Hyundai what happened was, I think when I was really struggling, it's, remember how the revs hung? Mm -hmm. So I think what it was doing, maybe it was disengaging the clutch. Right. And letting the engine just kind of free spool. Now we're gonna do the more challenging side. And what I would like, Andre, is that the line we're taking is gonna be a similar line that we take with the other one, so it can really compare them. Yeah, well, I'm gonna take kind of a hard line. Okay. Because I think it deserves it. It does, and you know, we know obviously this one's way gonna outperform the other ones, but mm -hmm. we really did wanna send a benchmark because if they can do what this can do easily, that's still pretty remarkable. And this is a lot harder than it looks, guys. Yeah, and it's all about also, of course, approach angles that matter. And uh, um, clearance matters. So Articulation matters. Thank you. And I just shot my glasses <laughs> off my head. <laughs> I did. Articulation matters. And that's what we're going through right now. There is some serious articulation yeah. going on with the rear axle, something those vehicles won't be able to do. No. And also, you know, this truck make, it makes it easy, I think. It does, but you know what the crazy part is? What? This has the least amount of torque amongst the three of them. <laughs> Isn't crazy. that crazy? This is a V6 gas engine, yeah. and it has, you know, decent torque, Yeah. but the little turbocharged guys are out torquing it. <laughs> Which is pretty funny, and they perform really well. We are very high altitude right now. We're over 9,000 feet up here. I yes. think we're close to 10. I think 9-ish. 9-ish? Probably, yeah. The question is, how do we do, go? how do we do, how, how does it fare going downhill? This is a much heavier vehicle than those, obviously. Yes, and also, you know what the others don't have? Hmm. Low gearing, low range. And this has hill descent control on top of that. Yes. And not all these little pickups are going to have that, which is questionable because in some cases, most crossovers do. You know what? I think I will be very scared to take the Santa Cruz up and down this hard part. Ah, we'll do it. Let's give it a shot. Uh, the canyon, the canyon, like you just saw, has enough clearance and enough capability. Makes it look easy. Yeah, it's a, it's a piece of cake. If it struggles, either either of these two vehicles struggles going up this. What I do say is that we should consider going up a slightly different line if we're going to slam into components. But yeah. I still think we should at least go up the obstacle. I, I agree. All right, so let's see how the Santa Cruz fares on the hard part. Santa Cruz time. Now for off-roading, the Santa Cruz is actually a little bit better on paper than the Maverick because it has a shorter wheelbase, so the breakover angle on the Santa Cruz is a little bit better. Also on paper, it has 23.2 degrees of departure angle, although this one is equipped with this hitch and towing package, which decreases that angle a bit, uh, so it's not ideal. Uh, the departure angle on the Maverick is 21.2. Yeah, and there's another question. Why is this not the one that comes with the regular four-cylinder and the regular automatic transmission. That's a very different vehicle. 
Aha! Well, because these two trucks, these compacts, are also part of our uh, competition, TFL Best Truck for 2022, and they're both equally equipped. All wheel drive, all the features, that's why. Okay, and I feel better being on the higher part of the hill. I'm taller now. <laughs> All right, are you ready to hit it, uh, the hard part? Yes, yes, let's do it. Um, this thing is not happy up here. Neither is the Maverick, really, so let's do it. Okay, a there little bit of momentum. Keep it on. It's hanging. My, the RPM hung, did you see that? Yes, it did. Okay. Hold on, let me reverse. I really, I don't have articulation, so my mm -hmm. wheel was in the air. Yep. And we are still locked according to yep. this, yes? Yep, we are. Okay. okay, so I can see the divot we dug. Yeah. So we might want to go a little around that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I can hit it this way. Go for it. Because that's less of a chance of me hanging a tire. Oh, that was better. Yeah, okay. much better. So now let's approach this hard part. In all honesty, if we hit with a little bit of momentum, hit that side, we might be able to get over this. Now, what was that beep, 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 beep? Beep, beep, beep was a uh, proximity warning. Oh. My, my parking sensor. I wonder if off. we can disengage that. We can, but I'm smelling clutches, mm -hmm. dude. Yep. Well, let's keep trying. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable with keep, keeping trying. Where's my parking sensors? Uh, so, you can see the size of these rocks are getting pretty big. And I don't, only 17 inch, uh, 17 degrees of clearance. And I'm afraid that we're gonna overheat the transmission. So I, I would say, I don't wanna, I, I'm not gonna go further. The Maverick is also equipped with a towing package. It can tow up to 4,000 pounds, whereas the Santa Cruz can tow up to 5,000 pounds. But this is actually, appears to be a little bit more integrated into the whole package. Another question that I have, and that is, why isn't this the FX4 package, which is available? I was afraid you were going to say that. Gee, are you going uphill again? Yeah, I like to be taller. <laughs> so the FX4 Maverick package is available. Right. It's not here. But actually, this is quite comparable other than the tires. So for the FX4 and the Maverick, you get slightly beefier tires. Right. No more ground clearance. Okay. But this, because it has a towing package, also has a slightly beefed up transmission, a little bit more cooling for the powertrain. Uh -huh. So this is still pretty stout, although it doesn't have the front tow hooks mm -hmm. or the uh, tires. All right, hard part. Let's go. So Santa Cruz struggle. I'm taking very similar line. Yeah, we're trying to be as fair as possible. This is doing way better. Um, I'm already surprised. Let's try that. You can see where kind the tires the same are. Line. Yeah, right? yeah, we're I see. The it. Same I line. See it. Now this does have a better approach angle, but the breakover angle is better on the Santa Cruz. Exactly. Oh, I got hung up. Oh. A little bit of momentum might have gotten me over that. Who knows? So let me give it another shot. Once again, I don't want to fly over this uh, in danger of ripping something from underneath. Now, we're definitely lifting tires, and even though that looks cool in video, you really don't want to. The whole point is having contact as long as possible so it gets you over obstacles. Exactly. And independent suspensions don't exactly favor uh, articulation. No, especially in kind of a street-based vehicle, right? Yeah. Because right. Doing it. So, so, oh, come boy. on, come on. Okay. Oh. Okay, now clearance is an issue, right? Yeah, you got it, dude. Oh! oh it's a it's a oh, shame dude, you I, down. I said something bad. Yes, you did. And that will be edited out from this particular <laughs> video because this is a family show. I wanted to show you guys something because a lot of you were asking about articulation. So, this one, well, as you can see, it doesn't take much to get the wheel off the ground. One of the problems about having an independent suspension, especially a rear suspension, is the fact that there's just not a ton of articulation. And you want this tire to be touching the ground as often as possible. Now come over here and look at the GMC, because this one's flexing even more, but as you can tell, no problem with contact patch. 
because that solid axle does give you a lot more articulation. But the trade-off is ride. On our way here, we were going over washboard, and both the Santa Cruz and the Maverick performed way better on washboard. I have a, I have a foot. Mm -hmm. I have a foot this way. Okay. So with the Santa Cruz, we did this obstacle, and what we were really worried about is ripping off the thread. Chuck's point, this is a better approach angle, so we might be able to get through it. Yes! Dangle. So we might be able to get through it. Yes! <laughs> and we did. And we got over it. Very, very we, good. We did. Oh, there's one more part. Ooh, this might be questionable for clearance. You got it. You got it. Nothing touched. Piece of cake. Uh -huh. Also, not as quite as much uh, smell. No, because it's, this is the thing that we've been worried about, and it's been in the back of our minds. We hate to say it, but we know for a fact that the dual clutch system in the Hyundai can overheat. We've done it before. We've overheated the system before, which is why we're looking forward to getting the regular automatic exactly. version of it. Now, we're going down this obstacle. This is all him using the brakes, meaning any damage that is incurred is, is all on, Andre. On my shoulders. Send the complaints directly to Andre, care of tfltruck.com. <laughs> so, the... <laughs> <laughs> so far, the good news is, despite the fact that this thing's what, 8.6 inches? Yes. It's managed to do some obstacles that a lot of crossovers have struggled and not finished with similar ground clearance. Oh. Hold and, on. Oh. oh, you can do it. Oh. It's a little tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, that was Did barely. you hear that? Yeah. Just touched it. It's fine. Can you see that sharp rock? Is there any way you can see it? Hold on. Just to stop here. It's running slow. You're gonna have to go more driver. More driver? Yeah. All right, give it a shot. Like like now? Yeah, nice and slow. Keep going, just milk it. Oh, what was that? I think that is your... My rear? rear? Yeah, that's your butt. Okay. And from here, it's nice and easy. You know, seeing over this hood isn't exactly easy. It's a very squared off hood. Longish, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of longish. Um, Sight lines aren't too bad, though. Ooh. Okay, that's another one. Yeah. Okay. Now, would I say that either of these are ready for Moab? <laughs> I'd say yes. Okay. Yeah, give me the steering wheel. I'll take him on. My fins and things. Oh, that'd be perfect. It uh, will probably no. scratch the crap out of both of them, but, you know, so what? How, um, about, how about we lift them? I saw some lifted Mavericks. There's already Mavericks. On, and, uh, and somebody's talking about lifting a um, Santa Cruz already. So both of these vehicles with more aggressive tires would have done much better. We know that. Yeah. Um, both of these vehicles with a slight lift would do better. We know that as well. The traction control systems work very differently. And I'm going to give this to the Maverick. Without I, a doubt. I would agree. Without a doubt. Yeah. It pre behaved much better than I expected. I actually expected the Hyundai to do better. Because we've driven the Tucson and other vehicles which have a very similar Santa drive Santa system. Fe, yes. Right, and we've done those in light off-roading and they've done fairly well. We proved a couple things here today. One of which is tires are everything. Crossovers do have a hard time on this. And also that the Ford Maverick performed better than we expected. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I would think if I was just, you know, owned both of these trucks and was going to go camping, mm -hmm. I would not take it on like, something like this. I would, but uh, I'm an idiot. No, I would take the Maverick and the Santa Cruz maybe more on forest roads like we were just on. Right. And not challenging like this because if, as soon as you hit something underneath, oh boy, things happen. Yeah, and articulation is a real problem with these vehicles. And even if people decide to lift them, and people already <laughs> are, you can only do so much with an independent suspension. Proving that a mid-sized truck set up properly can handle this without a problem. Yes, and this is of course also part of our TFL Best Truck Series. And we also have towing with these right? uh, pick, little pickups and fuel efficiency runs and much more. That's right, so stay tuned. That's all coming your way. <laughs>